So first, let's talk about our breath. So what I'd like you to do is get a nice, comfortable position, some place where you're not feeling stressed, and just settle in comfortably. And you can do this standing or sitting. Some people prefer to do it sitting. And want to bring your mind's focus to thinking about your breathing. So breathe in a nice breath. And just become aware of your body breathing. Now, when you are stressed, particularly stressed, your lungs may feel tight and taking a deep breath may hurt. So we want you to think about this as if you are blowing up a balloon. You know when you first get a balloon and you have to put slower, shorter breaths in into the balloon while you prime it and open it up? That's how we're going to think about our lungs. So you want to take in a deep breath as deep as you can go, but not to where it's hurtful. So go ahead and take in a deep breath and then let it out. Okay, now that you did that one deep breath, now just breathe regularly for a more moment. It's important to find your normal rhythm of breathing. So breathe in and out as you normally would and just become comfortable with what is your normal rhythm of breathing. Breathe in and out. And then I'll prompt you. I'll say the words, go ahead. And when I say that, take another deep breath, as deep as you can, maybe a little bit deeper than the last one. Okay, go ahead. And then let that breath out. And then settle back into your normal rhythm of breathing. Gently disengage your mind from distracting thoughts. It's easy to let your mind wander and everyone does. It's because you're smart. You just kindly bring your mind back and focus again on your breath. Okay, I'm gonna say the words go ahead in a minute here. And when I say that again, you wanna take in another deep breath, this time going a little bit deeper than the one before. Go ahead. And then let that breath out. And then settle back into your normal rhythm of breathing. Now just think about the breath and what it's doing for you. It's bringing you oxygen, life, healing. Experts have shown that Regulating your breathing and focusing on breathing is one of the quickest ways to reduce some of the anxiety and stress that you may feel. I'm gonna say, go ahead again, and I want you to take another big deep breath, deeper this time, a little bit more than last time. Go ahead. Then let that breath out and settle back into your normal rhythm of breathing. Now feel that as it's starting to flood your body. You've got an influx of oxygen, which should be hitting your brain about now. You'll start to feel good. So now that we've got our lungs opened up, let's do another big deep breath. And this time, see if you can have your exhale be long and slow as well. So you have a slow inhale and a slow exhale. When I do this, I like to purse my lips as if I'm blowing out a candle. Okay, so when I say the word, when I give you the prompt, breathe in really slow and then breathe out really slow. Okay, go ahead. Now settle back into your normal rhythm of breathing. Work with your body. As your mind gets distracted, as it will, just kindly bring it back to this moment. 
Let's do another big deep breath. And so when I give the prompt, breathe in, a nice deep breath and the breathe out nice and slow. Okay, go ahead. and then settle into your normal rhythm of breathing. Just know that you can do this at any time, anywhere. Remember the beginning step, which was, if your lungs are tight because you're anxious, you have to take progressively deeper breaths to open up your lungs. Don't try to force it, we don't want pain. But as you do the breathing and focusing on your breath, you will be able to feel more relaxed. Here's a quick little way to think about it. You wanna stop and you wanna smell the flower, blow out the candle, and then relax your body. So those four steps may help you remember how to do this. So you stop, Smell the flower, blow out the candle, and then relax your body. The next one is the body scan. So now that we're relaxed with some breathing, breathe in again, a nice deep breath. And then as you focus on your breathing, also, have your brain focus from muscle to muscle on your body and start relieving the tension. So focus on your breathing, take a breath in, and now scan your body. Start at the top of your head, release the tension, move to your jaw, release the tension there. Focus on the back of your neck. Release the tension, the front of your neck, releasing the tension. Another big deep breath. And then your shoulders, release the tension there. Your upper chest and upper back, release the tension there. Mid back, Mid abdomen, release the tension. Another deep breath in. Breathing out, release the tension in your lower abdomen and your lower back. Release the tension from your legs, your knees, your calves, and your feet. Another technique you can do is you can find that spot that hurts and imagine yourself breathing in goodness to that spot, breathing in life and healing to that spot. So if you're tense in your shoulders, imagine yourself breathing into your shoulders. Big deep breath in, go ahead. And then breathe out the tension, let it go with your breath. Another exercise is called a cooked noodle exercise. Now this exercise is similar to the body scan, except for it's more immediate. So when I say the words cooked noodle, what I'd like you to do is imagine that all the tension leaves your body instantly as if a light switch turned off and your muscles become like cooked noodle, cooked spaghetti. So, and then you want to hold that for 10 seconds. And you can do this on your own. You can do it standing, you can do it sitting, you can do it laying down any way that you want, but it's an immediate release of tension. So once again, the instructions are, I'm going to say cooked noodle, and you imagine all the tension leaving, just let it leave your body like a light switch turned off and hold it for 10 seconds. Okay, here we go. 
cooked noodle. <sighs> Let the tension go. Feel it draining from your neck and shoulders and arms down your back down your hips and thighs and knees and feet. And you've held it for 10 seconds. Now come back to life. How did that feel? Many people have a hard time doing this. So let's practice again. Once again, I'll say cook noodle and you want to release all the tension in your body all at once as if a light switch went off. Okay, here we go, cooked noodle. Release the tension, let it go. Let it drain from you, drain from your jaw, your neck, your back, your hips, your legs, your knees, your feet into the floor. And come back to life. And let's do that one more time. The immediate release of the tension can be very helpful to the body, letting it go instantly. Okay, here we go again, cooked noodle. <sighs> Release the tension, let it drain from your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, your back, your hips, your legs, your knees, your ankles and your feet. And now come back to life. So during normal functioning, when we seem to be walking around without a care in the world, we process things in a certain way. We have thoughts that happen and they freely come and go. And then we have feelings associated with those, th those thoughts. And then there's behaviors. So for example, if I'm thinking today's Thursday, one more day in the work week, and then I got a weekend, that thought is gonna make me feel happy. And then what might behavior I might have, I might smile, I might greet someone uh, a little nicely. If it's a Monday and if my thought is, oh, it's Monday, I don't like Mondays. And if I perpetually think that, then my feeling might be grumpy, sad, irritable. And then my behaviors might be a little bit negative. I may frown, I may slouch. And so there really is a link between what we think, which produces a feeling in us, which produces a behavior. So that's our normal functioning. So the cognitive behavioral process happens whether we want it to or not. When anxiety hits or when worry hits, it can be a little bit different. A lot of times there is an intense emotion that happens first and it grabs you. Then it starts a racing thought. What if? What if this happens? And what if that happens? And what if this? And those racing thoughts can cause more emotion that can be a little more intense and erratic behavior. Because when we're thinking, what if, what if, what if? we're all over the place. A lot of times that intense emotion is fear. It's usually fear. Some people choose anger instead, but usually it's fear. And the racing thought, what if? There was actually some interesting research done that talked about the human condition. And our biggest fear is, what if I can't handle it? So whatever the stimulus is, whether it be bees or bears or snakes or heights or social speaking or getting a new job, our biggest fear is that we can't handle it. And so we have a lot of what if racing thoughts. And that can cause an exaggerated fear, which may cause behaviors that we may not want, such as escaping, avoiding, not trying new things, not engaging in the thing that's fearful. So using the cognitive behavioral process to help us mitigate some of that happens like this. The first thing is you wanna catch it. You wanna catch the fear, label it, say what it is, write it down, just give it a name. And then you want to look for some underlying assumptions that you have made over time about that thought. And remember, it's not the situation that's causing the stress, it's your thoughts and your interpretation and the intense emotion that caused the stress. So what are some underlying assumptions? So. For example, if you're afraid of dogs, you may write it down, I'm afraid of dogs. What, what assumption have you made over time? The assumption may be all dogs are dangerous. So you wanna start by catching it, labeling it and writing it down. Then you go to the check it phase. This is the evaluation phase. You want to evaluate 
the story that you have told yourself over time. Where did that story come from? So perhaps when I was young, I saw someone get bit by a dog. That impacted me as a child. That was scary and terrifying. Now, what my brain has done with that, the story that it tells itself over time is that all dogs are dangerous. So if I want to see if I can manage this anxiety, anxiety, first thing to do is give it a rating. How intense is it? How, do I, how much am I feeling right now? Now, if it's a worry, that number is going to be a little lower. Once it's anxiety, that number is going to be a little bit higher. And of course, the body is going to respond as well. Heartbeat, heart racing, tight chest, heart difficulty breathing, those types of things. So the evaluation is, to, is once again to remind yourself it's a thought. The thought of seeing a dog is what's causing me stress. And I have a choice on that thought. So I want to do a reality check. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, am I sure? Am I sure that all dogs are dangerous? Maybe I need to do some more evaluation. Maybe I need to check in with people who have dogs. Maybe I need to be introduced to a dog that is friendly. So then I go to the change it portion. This is where you want to choose an action because the goal here is to regain control. Because when you have the feeling or thought before that all dogs are dangerous, then that leaves you paralyzed whenever a dog is near and you don't have control. So the goal here is to regain control of the fear. And so choosing a small action, a positive action, can be very beneficial. You want to put your body in the experience of experience. So perhaps what I would do is find a person who has a dog and go meet that dog and become familiar with how that dog interacts, become familiar with normal dog behavior about how they move and what, how they wag their tail and all the things that are dog behavior. And then I want to act as if when I'm there in the presence of the dog or any other anxiety, I'm going to act as if it's not an issue. The goal here is I want to allow my brain to absorb, absorb what it feels like to act as if. So what does it mean to act as if? That means you talk slowly and softly, smile, open posture, relaxed body, breathe it out, and the other tools that have been mentioned in this module. And then you want to also focus on change. What is going to change here? Well, I know that I'm nervous now and I'll feel better later because anxiety does go. It does wax and wane. And so when I get my thoughts focused on, I will change, it will change. It could have a change. Then I can start to better analyze what's happening with me. So I'm telling my brain I can handle it. And I'm telling my body, I'm acting as if I can handle it. And that sends a message that I'm in control. And that's what we want to regain when we have anxiety. Remember that small positive actions have a cumulative effect. Small positive actions have a cumulative effect. So every small action you take to manage your anxiety will be helpful. The first thing is you want to catch it. You want to catch the fear, label it, say what it is, write it down, just give it a name. And then you want to look for some underlying assumptions that you have made over time about that thought. And remember, it's not the situation that's causing the stress, it's your thoughts and your interpretation and the intense emotions that cause the stress. So what are some underlying assumptions? So. For example, if you're afraid of dogs, you may write it down, I'm afraid of dogs. What, what assumption have you made over time? The assumption may be all dogs are dangerous. So you wanna start by catching it, labeling it and writing it down. Then you go to the check it phase. This is the evaluation phase. You want to evaluate the story that you have told yourself over time. Where did that story come from? So perhaps when I was young, I saw someone get bit by a dog. That impacted me as a child. That was scary and terrifying. Now what my brain has done with that, the story that it tells itself over time is that all dogs are dangerous. 
So if I want to see if I can manage this anxiety, anxiety, first thing to do is give it a rating. How intense is it? How do I, how much am I feeling right now? Now, if it's a worry, that number is going to be a little lower. Once it's anxiety, that number is going to be a little bit higher. And of course, the body is going to respond as well. Heartbeat, heart racing, tight chest, heart difficulty breathing, those types of things. So the evaluation is, to, is once again to remind yourself it's a thought. The thought of seeing a dog is what's causing me stress. And I have a choice on that thought. So I want to do a reality check. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, am I sure? Am I sure that all dogs are dangerous? Maybe I need to do some more evaluation. Maybe I need to check in with people who have dogs. Maybe I need to be introduced to a dog that is friendly. So then I go to the change it portion. This is where you want to choose an action because the goal here is to regain control. Because when you have the feeling or thought before that all dogs are dangerous, then that leaves you paralyzed whenever a dog is near and you don't have control. So the goal here is to regain control of the fear. And so choosing a small action, a positive action, can be very beneficial. You want to put your body in the experience of experience. So perhaps what I would do is find a person who has a dog and go meet that dog and become familiar with how that dog interacts, become familiar with normal dog behavior about how they move and what, how they wag their tail and all the things that are dog behavior. And then I want to act as if when I'm there in the presence of the dog or any other anxiety, I'm going to act as if it's not an issue. The goal here is I want to allow my brain to absorb, absorb what it feels like to act as if. So what does it mean to act as if? That means you talk slowly and softly, smile, open posture, relaxed body, breathe it out, and the other tools that have been mentioned in this module. And then you want to also focus on change. What is going to change here? Well, I know that I'm nervous now and I'll feel better later because anxiety does go. It does wax and wane. And so when I get my thoughts focused on, I will change, it will change. It could have a change. Then I can start to better analyze what's happening with me. So I'm telling my brain I can handle it. And I'm telling my body, I'm acting as if I can handle it. And that sends a message that I'm in control. And that's what we want to regain when we have anxiety. Remember that small positive actions have a cumulative effect. Small positive actions have a cumulative effect. So every small action you take to manage your anxiety will be helpful. One way to handle some of the anxiety that we feel sometimes, or even worry, is a technique called butterfly anchor to the heart. We all experience nervous feelings, and oftentimes they're referred to as butterflies in your stomach. This technique works really well with children, but it also can work really well with adults. So you've got the butterflies going around, and sometimes they're crazy thoughts in your head, sometimes they're in your stomach. When you start to feel this happening, the first thing you want to do is you want to put your hands out in front of you, palms out, and then pull your hands to your chest and anchor with your thumbs close to your heart. Then wrap your fingers, curl your fingers around your thumbs one by one while repeating this phrase, one for each finger. I can do this even though it's hard. Put those hands together and you've just made a heart Press in and then go out with bravery. So let's repeat the butterfly stomach, butterfly thoughts, anchor close to your heart and repeat one word per finger as you curl them around your thumbs. I can do this even though it's hard. Put it together like a heart, press in and then go out with bravery. The Mayo Clinic 
has talked about grounding with the five senses. So this is a mindfulness technique that helps you think about the place where you are right now. So look around the room you're in and think about five things that you can see in this room. So I can see a chair, a wall, a box of Kleenex, a telephone. What can you see where you are? Think of five things that you can see. Now, think about four things that you can feel and actually touch them. See if you can get different textures. Feel a hard surface, a soft surface, fabric, paper, plastic, metal. Feel the different temperatures that there are when you feel them. Now focus on three things that you can hear in this spot. Can you hear a computer running, a fan, people talking? What can you hear? If you listen close enough, can you hear outside noises? Now think about two things that you can smell right now. If you can't smell anything in particular, think of something that you like to smell and imagine yourself smelling that. Let it overwhelm your senses. Now, lastly, think of one thing that you can taste in your mouth. If you can't taste anything, think of something that you would like to taste, something that brings you comfort. This is a particularly helpful technique in any situation because you can always find five things you can see, four things you can touch, three things you can hear, smell, and taste. And as you look at those, your five senses, it becomes a grounding experience for you and you can get in this present moment. The next exercise we're going to do is a guided imagery. So I want you to think of a place where you feel particularly happy and safe. If you'd like to close your eyes, you may do so. If you'd like to find a spot about three feet in front of you and just drop your gaze to that spot, you may do that as well. But think of that spot, that place where you feel and are particularly happy and safe. Each one of you is going to have a different place. Go there in your mind. And when you go there, let's look at our five senses. Think of the things that you can see there. If you're in the mountains, you might see fluttering leaves. If you're at the beach, you might see waves. You look at your place and see what you see. Then expand to what you can touch. Touch the items in this safe spot. Feel yourself picking them up, observing them and holding them, and remembering that this is your safe place. Think of what you can hear here. Do you hear the hum of a bird? or the lap of the ocean, the gurgle of a creek. What do you hear in your place? Remind yourself that this is where you are safe and happy. Think of what you might smell there. And remember how safe and happy this place makes you. Spend some time in this place and remind yourself that this too shall pass and we will be back here to this safe, happy place. Harvard Medical School found that when people repeated a phrase or a prayer over and over in their mind, then it was really helpful so we've adopted these four phrases 
from a loving kindness meditation. So when you are in a relaxed state, or even if you're not, repeat these words again and again. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. And may I be loved. Say them again in your mind. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. And may I be loved. Say it one more time. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. And may I be loved. As you repeat a phrase that is important to you, it begins to have a calming effect. Substitute any phrase or prayer that is important to you 